I've seen artists that's just stupid talented, but no business acumen whatsoever. And those are always the ones that's in the studio complaining about another artist that he's better than. But he's not realizing you're better than him from a talent standpoint, but he's better than you from a business standpoint. And that's the only reason why he's excelling above you. Akon has been a very successful artist. He's been a successful music executive. He's been a successful businessman altogether, which is why I think he's one of the best people to have a perspective to listen to when it comes to breaking down why artists win in music and business. Check it out. You have to approach the artistry from a business standpoint. You have to be not just an entertainer, but you also have to be an entrepreneur. And even when, I'm, when I sign artists, I make it very clear. You are in the music business. I like that right there. That's a great, great take. The music gets you to the business. We always hear the music business taking all that stuff, but the music gets you to the business, which when you think about it, that's exactly what it does. Mm -hmm. Like people are only doing business with you because you have music, mm -hmm. right? You have enough visibility in your music or a lot of musical talent. So now we're doing this business in the music industry, mm -hmm. right? Without that, then what are we doing? Mm -hmm. But the industry, when you talk industry anyway, you're literally talking about money. You're talking about business. Mm -hmm. So the music, yeah, this is that's your entry point into this business. But it's not business being the entry point into doing music. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, 100%. I and, yeah, I get that. I get that. The music opens the door for more business. But in order for the music to thrive, you got to do the business. So when you look at someone like Drake, let's use Drake for instance. But do you honestly think he stayed in the business this long, been this consistent this long, if he didn't have a great business acumen? He clearly has a great business sense because... Drake got great business acumen? Yeah, definitely. Where would you put him in terms of rating artists of all time, business acumen? Like new artists or just artists in general? New artists. I put him top 20. Top 20? Yeah, I think so. Who is above him? Like, I mean, the, the obvious, like 50 Cent, Jay-Z, Dr. Dre, oh, he's Diddy, okay, you, Akon, you, you Jason him. Derulo. Older people. <laughs> Let's go. I've seen artists that's just stupid talented, but no business acumen whatsoever. And those are always the ones that's in the studio complaining about another artist that he's better than. But he's not realizing you're better than him from a talent standpoint, but he's better than you from a business standpoint. That's the only reason why he's excelling above you. God damn, what is brother preaching? Bruh. Shit crazy, god damn. The artists who are <laughs> complaining about the person who is doing better than them might have the talent, but they might not have the business acumen. Mm -hmm. Which goes back to a point we always make where artists like to think that this shit is 90 to 100% art and talent when really art and talent is like maybe 15% max. It's not even close. If, you, <laughs> if you're thinking about the music as a way to get to the business, that should clearly show you that most of this is about the business. Because again, this is an industry. What's feeding people is the economy of the music industry. People aren't eating the art. They're not being fed off of the art directly. There has to be business that gets attached to it. So you should expect to be losing if you just have talent and you're not activating business in the music industry if you're moving in the music industry, the music business. Where you should expect to beat the artist who has less talent than you is a talent show. Yeah, and, and, and we all know artists like that too, bro, where you're like, you're like, man, bro, can we make up a plan to sell these T-shirts? And you're like, I'm about to go write another song. You're like, man, I know it's going to be a banger, bro, but these T-shirts. <laughs> this this bank account, man, it's looking a little stiff. Got to be active over here. <laughs> We're trying to do more business so you can have the freedom to create more art. Yeah. But you don't want to do that. You just want to be about the art. And again, a talent show, bam, all day. You got it. Like we're going to straight develop, we're going to sing, we're going to dance, we'll do all that. And if the man who's not as good as you beats you, I'll be right there with you. Oh, ain't no way. No way in hell, buddy, should have beat you, man. You, you, you sing better than him, you rap better than him, he don't got no skill. He must have just won because he connected his mama or, he, you know, people think he, he looked better or something like that. But nah, bro, you, you got him, you got him. But we talking about the music business? Now there's other things at play, far more than just that talent. So you got to look at everything as a whole. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. It goes back into that whole, you know, like it's it's it's, it's cool to be just an artist until it's not. <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's cool to be cool until it ain't cool no more. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody want to be the cool guy. Everybody want to be chill. You don't want to be hype. You don't want to come in their energy with the Gary V energy until all of a sudden you're back against the wall and you hungry. You know what I'm saying? And now all of a sudden you coming out like this, you should have had this type of energy the whole way through for your business. Yeah, that's why I, I never agree with the sentiment. And it's really usually like 
indie artists or smaller artists that like hate the artists that admit they do things just for money. I, I get it. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I think that artist is smart. You know what I'm saying? Because I think the artist who only does it for the love of music is the one that's, that's got it fucked up. You know what I'm saying? Because like, one, everybody else is definitely looking at you and seeing dollar signs. So mm-hmm. If you're not seeing the same dollar signs they see, you're already starting off on a bad foot. You know? Or not, you don't have to see the exact same dollar signs, but like, if you're not at least seeing half of that to as many as what other people are seeing, like you think, yo, my bag here is streams and touring and maybe the occasional sync deal in some pub. It's like, yeah, that's that's a very great traditional music path. But I promise you that the people who are around you who are probably smarter than you see way more dollar signs out of you than just that. You know that is a fact. That is a great point. <laughs> Robert Greene wrote a book called 48 Laws of Power. And people talk about Robert Greene. There were a lot of people that were mad. It was polarizing. Oh, you're writing all this Machiavellian evil like tips and you're telling people to do these manipulative tactics. And he was like, no, no, no. I'm just letting y'all know how the world works. Things that are being done. Yes, you could use these as a weapon for destruction, but you also could just be using this information to become aware of what other people are trying to do to you. Mm -hmm. Right? It takes a con man sometimes not to get con. You have to know how how a con man thinks. So at the very least... We're out here having these conversations on this platform. And I know sometimes y'all might think, man, hey, y'all two on the executive side or y'all two, you like, y'all seem like y'all against artists. No, nah, we, we for everybody doing things and getting their best out of the situation without screwing other people over. However, everybody. Ev- yeah, everybody. everybody, not just you. <laughs> One, yeah, everybody, not just you. And then two, like, we got to have these conversations and put them out there in this way versus just this, oh, you be India and you own your masters and everything's rainbows and butterflies and like, but if we just had that one-sided conversation, you never get the reality and never get to think and see the game like other people see the game. And that's why I say your point, right? You got to understand how other people are looking at you. Because mm-hmm. if you don't know how other people are looking at you, you don't really have much leverage, even if you have leverage, because you don't know where your leverage exists. Yeah, You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I'm trying to make a deal with you. You care about like my my ability to bring out people to shows but I'm up here like, hey, my song got streams, but like if I give a bad performance and I screw you over there and you're a booking agent, it's like, yeah, the streams are kind of like a part of the game, mm-hmm. right? That that kind of give me an indicator. But like, I need you to give good shows. I need you to actually bring mm-hmm. people up, yeah. bring people out. But hey, if I'm just making money off your streams, you could do playlists and not have no real fans and it, and it works mm-hmm. for, for you, right? Yep. Like things are... You have to understand where your leverage lies with every single person. It's like, oh, yeah, your personality might mean a whole lot to somebody who wants to do a brand deal with you or use you for a TV show. Like, there's different points of leverage, different decisions that get made. And artists, if you don't understand how each person is looking at you and where their incentives are, then trust me, you won't be getting the best out of the situation for yourself either. Yeah, facts. I got to interrupt this video real quick to let the artists and managers who are looking to grow know that I have a major announcement because as many of you know, we're bringing out J.R. McKee, who is responsible for selling over 160 million records, literally, along with us, right? We want to meet artists in person. However, many of you guys said, I can't make it to that event, brand man. I really want to make it. And I know that the information is going to be great because I got to see the growth from artists who went last time. Great. Well, we finally broke down and decided to allow artists to get access to a replay 30 days after the event. However, you have to buy your ticket to the event before the event. We're not going to give anybody access to the event or the ability to submit their music for us to listen to if they don't purchase their ticket before the event, before it sells out. As many of y'all know already, there's only 100 tickets available. So you will have the ability to get your music listened to, be considered to have a free one-on-one call with me, J.R. McKee, and Ja'Cory, Also, be shared on our social media platforms amounting to over 200,000 followers and be put in front of our record label distributor and manager friends, the people who can help you grow. And if they want to reach out, like we'll help facilitate that. So that's the quick announcement. October 15th, www.nolabelsnecessary.com slash DC. We'll put the link in the description on YouTube. If you want your music considered, if you want to see this exclusive event that we're only showing in a private space, never putting out this information publicly online, go ahead and grab it before they're sold out. Peace. 
because he's learned how to take his talent and maximize the business. So in business, you want to have a brand or some kind of talent that brings the eyes to you to give you the opportunity to sell it to somebody. So music should always just be, you know, a stepping stone to get into it or a bridge to get to the opportunity. There it is. Uh oh, you 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 being a choir singing for his preaching? Yeah, should hit my spirit, bro. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> shit, 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 touch my soul, bro. Music is a bridge <laughs> to get to the opportunity. That reminds me of those talks we had with Will I Am, who used to always we didn't talk with Will yeah, I was I Am. Like, those those, those like, talks we had <laughs> about Will I Am, you know, them clips where he was saying music is has always been used to sell something else, mm -hmm. right? Yes, your music is on the CD, but really the CD is being sold because the CD manufacturers are a huge part of it, part of it right? And they're mm -hmm. selling their CDs by putting your music on it. They can also sell their CDs by putting a, a movie on it, right? They're just moving CDs and then a the label owns the CDs and like all these things, right? So people are using music as the marketing to sell something else. If everybody else is doing that, you should be doing the same thing, yeah. right? And that's where people aren't, or artists, aren't willing to kind of like break that that wall and get through that wall. It's like you really have been looking at the art as the value all this time. And it is valuable, right? Just like having people's attention is valuable. Having a TV show is valuable. But the money has always gotten made from the commercials in between, right? Yeah. Like, you are the show. Now, what commercials are happening in between that to monetize the attention that you brought. Yeah, no, I agree with that. Cause I think the the general sentiment is the value is in the music. I think the value is in what happens once the people listen to the music. That's what the value really lies, right? Does this music inspire this, I don't know, this this sync rep to think of all these shows you could fit in, right? That's another bad coming away. Does the music inspire, you know, we've talked before about how you would be surprised at who's in your fan base sometimes. Like it could be, you know, a 16 year old kid who loves you. It could be like a fucking exec at Nike mm -hmm. that loves your your music and and he or she hears it and, and now can imagine all these brand activations you could be a part of because the music has inspired them to think of you in that way. So that's what I think, I man. I think the value is in what happens to the people after they listen to the music more than the music itself, you know what I'm saying? More than the music? <sighs> Because a great song that doesn't inspire people to take action, to me, is not as great as a non-great song that does inspire people to take action. In my, I, in my in, to me, the second situation is the stronger situation. When you say take action, what do you mean? Like buy things from you, mobilize around you in a certain way, um, yeah. inspires ideas that get spread, you know, things like that. Okay. That does, I mean, that's more than the song itself because even a great song, if nobody attached is it to an artist or I'm saying. lifestyle, it's hard to monetize that's it. That's what I'm saying, bro. Like the, <laughs> the great song that doesn't motivate people and move them to do something is not as great as the mediocre song that does move people to do things. You know what I'm saying? See, that to I, me is the greater situation. I I, I, I see it this way. <laughs> <laughs> I think the, the economic value for sure is based off of what can be drawn from that music, right? Mm -hmm. That's the raw material. Mm -hmm. And then people go mining, right, to capitalize in one way or another. But they're going to dig through that material. You know, the music itself, the value that it brings is more so, like, spiritual in nature. Mm -hmm. right? It's like you made this person feel like this, right? You impacted their emotions. But the monetization around that, economically, has to be pulled out, right? Yeah. It has to be converted in some form or fashion. So yes, it does have value, but the world we live in, you know, the way things are set up, the way people eat and things like that, mm -hmm. you can't do that, yeah. right? Like, like you, you're not gonna you're not gonna get anything from that. So yes, it has value, but and that value is is very high, and that's what allows people to then sell some T-shirts because of it, or come out to your show and sell like an event because of your music. But think of it that way. The music is an attractive thing that people want to experience and want to feel. And again, but you still are not selling the music. You're marketing the event and you happen to be performing your music there, right? Because it could be another person. Like people go to events all the time, right? The movie theaters. Mm -hmm. I've marketed this screen time that I have. The movie is there. I'm just trying to get new people to buy tickets. Mm -hmm. If you're thinking about that, about it that way, 
I'm a movie theater and I'm gonna exist no matter what movie is coming on. Yeah. I just want whatever movies are gonna bring people in. Get people to get the this movies popcorn. are literally the market <laughs> to buy my the marketing to buy my tickets to buy my popcorn. Mm-hmm. That is it. And that's really what you're doing, and you're just monetizing in different ways. Yourself, bump the labels and all these other people. If you are doing music and you have a show, right, you could have thrown any kind of event. You chose to bring them in with your music. You could have tried to bring them in with some IG models or something like that. Mm -hmm. You chose to draw people using your music. You yourself are using it as marketing, and that's just the bridge of opportunity that that Akon is saying, man. And I love that he said that. Like, this is... Like, this is just a bridge to something else. And everybody that we know got money, money, who started in the music industry. Bridge to something else. Something that's not the music <laughs> industry. Yeah. They, 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 they bridging, they, they kind of talking about city. We talking about rock aware and Sean John uh, clothing brands. and TV shows. TV shows. Yeah, we look at the, the Will Smiths and the Queen Latifahs. Like, that's what the entertainment industry is, right? That's what the entertainment industry is. Art is, again, this... This thing that does have value, but that value has to be extracted into something that we can we can use <laughs> in the world that we live in. Yeah, man. We talk about becoming an icon, you know, like whether living or dead, which I will argue 95 to 99 percent of artists, if you ask them, want to be iconic in some way. I can't think of any examples of artists who became iconic solely off of music and their business decisions haven't been factored into that equation. I can't think of one. Not one artist that we might consider iconic that hasn't made great business decisions. I could no, be wrong. No, no, no. You can't say that, bro. Who? We got a lot of artists. Give me three right now. Who didn't make great business decisions? Yeah. You got to go the old days, bro. Like I mean, the okay, old well, all right. All right. It was like all Let them icons. Let's say, let's say 90s and up. Since being... A business acumen artist kind of became a little bit more of okay. the norm. So, like, I would argue mid to late nineties and up. Since it wasn't all just record labels. Pushing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Maybe Adele. I don't know if Adele does business stuff. She don't know what I can think of. But I feel like she got like a car wash or something on the back end. Yeah, I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know everybody's business and everything. But I feel like there's artists that people love. That have made bad businesses. But they're not love, but not necessarily culturally iconic. Well, actually, I can't think of one, but I don't think I can say that right there. <laughs> yes, I cannot, because someone told me that it's in um in uh in private. Yeah, in private. Okay. There's definitely an icon <laughs> who's uh who's apparently broke. Uh but I'll leave it at that. <laughs> this is yet another clip from No Labels Necessary Podcast. I'm Brandman Sean. I'm Corey. And we out. Peace.